Yes, 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 who got brands talking? Brandlife.co.za. Good morning, everybody. I'm back with you this morning, and welcome to Crime Uncovered. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Silke Kaiser. I am a polygraphist, which means I conduct polygraph testing, and I've written a book called Gotcha, which is about crime in South Africa. And on my shows, I always have the most interesting people, and normally people who have so much courage, and today is no different. I have with me a gentleman by the name of Craig. Craig, I know his story. I read up about his story. He was incorrectly incarcerated in South Africa, in Sun City. I'm going to chat to him today only about prison and the criminal justice system. I will get Craig back one day when he's ready to talk about the severe trauma he underwent. I know for sure, I'm 100% certain that Craig is not a criminal in any way, shape or form. In fact, he has such a delightful sense of humor. He's had me in stitches prior to us coming on air. Welcome to the show, Craig. Thank you. Lovely to have you here. Let's start. How long were you incarcerated for? I was sentenced um, for three years, but I was incarcerated for seven months. And I know that somebody clicked on to the fact that you had been incarcerated incorrectly, that in fact your trial might have been a bit of a sham, and they then went and approached somebody in the criminal justice system, and from there the paperwork was done and you were released. That's correct. I'm um, exceptionally grateful for a uh, gentleman. I won't m mention names or, 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 or their positions, who actually was leaving Johannesburg and going to Cape Town and felt that it was okay um, and he would be safe to actually reveal what had truly happened within my case. He wasn't on my case um, or assigned to my case, but he did know what was happening behind the scenes and spoke to his superiors on his last day here in Johannesburg. Well, we say thank you very much to that gentleman. Craig, I know you were incarcerated in Sun City. So Sun City is a Johannesburg prison in the south of Johannesburg. It's past South Gate, which is a mall. And it is called Thus, I'll just tell our listeners this, because of all the lights that are on at night. And that's why they call it Sun City. Not because it's luxurious or offers game drives in Palansburg next door. How many people, your cell that you were incarcerated in, how many people were meant to be in that cell? Silke, I was in a cell with, with um, predominantly parole breakers, and the cell is 21 meters by um, 15 meters. Okay. So that's smaller than a, a school swimming pool, and we were 124 gents in that cell, and there were only supposed to be 40. A hundred and twenty-four, and there were supposed to be forty. That's correct. So that's almost sixty, eighty, eighty-four people more than what is meant to be. That, that is correct. At one stage, um, Sun City or Diplo Prison was two hundred and thirty-four percent full. You know, there's something seriously wrong in our criminal justice system if they treat people like animals. I mean, the ANC mustn't come crying what, what to me when they allow their people to live like this. Uh, because even though people are criminals, which you are not, the parole breakers do not deserve that. I get so angry, Craig. I do go on rants on my show. I do, definitely. Because I find the ANC inept, insufficient, and totally corrupt. But totally, and nothing's been done. Let's move on to our next question. <laughs> How common is gang rape in prison? When you arrive in prison, the first thing you're taken uh, around by um, what, they, what they refer to as a monitor, someone who, who's a, a blow bitey, someone who's been incarcerated for quite a while. And the first thing Sorry, is that his duty to take you around? Yes, yes it okay. is. Um, so he, he would take you around and give you all the rules of the prison and uh, really lord it on you that you, you're the underdog and, and they are in control. They will explain to you there are no gangs and, and they, they, you're, not allowed to do, you're not allowed to steal, you're not allowed to barter, you're not allowed to bring money in. All the things you're not allowed to do uh, and, and sodomy is not allowed. Ironically, in the hospital wing of, <laughs> of, the, um, of the prison, prison yes. there is a, a free condom dispenser, which you oh. have to ask yourself the questions, why would they have that if, if sodomy is not a, a, a allowed. allowed? 
Because in that prison, conjugal visits are not allowed, are they? That, that I don't, I, I'm not I don't sure know. of. Okay. I, I'm, I'm sure that um, for people who are in for longer periods of time, I'm sure that once they, they, their status goes down to, to um, from maximum down to, you know, a, a state where they, they are not at a high threat. risk. From high risk, they're going to become a low risk. Then what happens is I'm sure conjugal visits would happen as they do w globally. Okay. Um, however, on my first night, I woke up to what sounded to me, what um, the sounds of a... Sexual encounter. <laughs> Let me say it for you, Craig. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to say, it sounds you dear on, 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 on a, a honey who, um, honey honeymoon Moon, between okay. a husband and a wife. Right. And um, which really um, placed Disturbed a huge amount you. of fear in, w within me. Yeah. And, and um, yes, ra rape does occur. Um, something that, that I was unaware of, which actually came out in one of our, our sessions, is cor um, correctional rape, where um, g gents had came in who had chosen to be homosexuals, uh, that is the lifestyle they had chosen, that they would be raped by other prisoners, and, and that was supposed to correct them from their, their homosexual tendencies and make them real men again, um, which is, is quite an uh, uh, oxymoron, because if you really think about it, is is you got somebody sodomizing some somebody and now that sodomy is supposed to make Correct them, them a, yes. a, a true man yes as it were there are also what 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 i learned later um with one of the, the gents in our um cell um was that he was ruptured and and that to me was w one of the most shocking th things that that, that i had heard of he had got invo involved in, in buying drugs and not being able to afford, to afford it. He was a so he couldn't pay the he people he that he bought them from. He was, he was a week away from, from leaving, and I couldn't understand. I mean, yeah, I was fighting to, to get out and get my, my, my right to appeal, and he was leaving in a week's time, yet the sadness and, and, and the fear and, and, and just the way that he, his whole countenance was so different from what it had been during he, his incarceration and the time that, that we had spent together in the cell. And he, he withdrew, very much like a, a, a tortoise into its shell, in the shell. He remained inside, he remained under his, his, his sheets, he, he slept throughout the day, he slept throughout the night. Um, and Sounds like a depression to me. Well, definitely, and then understanding, uh, it, it came out why he, he hadn't paid his debt for the drugs that he had used. And so one day we came back into the cell, it was winter, so I did a huge amount of, of, of reading, Harlem Corbin and, and, and the likes, and Wilbur Smith became my, my best friends along with James Patterson, and he wasn't there. And it, it was weird because, you know, f for almost two, three weeks, his, his place on the top bunk had always been filled. So where was he? Well... Before I get to that, he only returned after Fuller. That is, is when you actually line up in their county at the end of the day and they lock okay. themselves yeah. at three o'clock. And then he was back in his bunk, but you could see that that he was a broken man. Okay, so just ex I have to sorry, I have to hurry you along, Craig, because we're going to run out of time. Explain rapture to me, please. Well, what had happened was because he hadn't paid his debt. And in most cases, the 28s, the gang of 28s, 28, yes. who operate within, and the Ni especially the Nigerians um, as well, who are not part of the 28s group. But he was taken um, forcibly by the 27s. And what they did was, in the, I don't know if what they used, but they would use something. An object. An object to rupture his anus. Mm. And then a 28 who, had, who was um, a, um, HIV positive then would have unprotected sex, sex with, him. with him. Okay. So therefore, he arrived um, ba uh, for six months because of possession and left with a death sentence. And the guards did nothing? Not, not them. They don't speak up. The guards are paid. The guards know um, who to, to, to pick on, who not to pick on, who's... Okay. who's who protected then, who's not protected. Exactly. Okay. You know, it, uh, I found within the prison system, within my seven months there, only one, one we call them a chattas, um, because they, always, they say they're always up your behind. And um, 
um, this gent was studying to be a lawyer, and he was the only true, genuine man who cared about those um, that he was um, looking after. Okay. You know, he was there to see that people actually grew. People, you know, he, he took an interest in each of the guys within in the prison, and he was genuine. If you took something to him, he would, he would um, actually assist you. Is there any rehabilitation programs in prison? Yes, there are. On paper. But doesn't no really happen. It doesn't happen. If anything, um, especially Diepkroft, um, Sun City is known as the University of Crime or Corruptional Services. Mm. Because what happens is at you're locked in from 3 o'clock in the afternoon till 8 o'clock the next morning. And that is when the, the inmates share their, their, their stories. They share how they were caught, what they did wrong. So what they're doing is they're actually informing one another on how best to carry out crime. That's right. I've heard of that before. Sure, that rupture stories. Of anyway, it's th that's what happens, and I think most of us have an idea of that. Okay, one more question before we go to break. Is it true that there are more foreigners in prison, South African prison, than actual South Africans? Definitely. And would you say there's one country that uh, leads the pack, so to say? Zimbabwe, closely followed by Nigeria. Okay. And 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 these gents uh, are the wheelers and dealers. Um, in, in in they're not allowed to have cell phones in prison. prison. However, majority of people um, have cell phones in smuggled prison. in past they the guards. They are smuggled in past the um, guards in manner that that are indescribable. So we can say it. I'm going to say it in the anuses and other bodily. Our officers. Correct. As they come from the court, that's where the, the, the record I was told that for um, is three Nokias. In an anus. In an anus. Okay. Um, and I mean, I, I, I must admit, I was exceptionally grateful that there were, were cell phones in, in the cell so that I had m a, a, a contact with my wife every single night. Wonderful. I knew that was happening. So that for me w w was an absolute blessing. But I did hear them carrying on their businesses from within. And did you make close friends in prison? I did. Um, it's, it's amazing is that the, the people in prison have nothing to lose. Spe and so you almost become as one, but I suppose the gangs all operate very separately. They, they operate amongst the people. So I, some of the people that I got very close to um, were in the 26s. And um, the twenty sixes, what gang is that? What do they do? They they they're the front of house, so they're the ones that will <laughs> find the money. They will okay. they will they will they will um, barter and, and things like that. Your twenty sevens are the enforcers, and your top dogs are your your twenty eights. Okay, we're going to go to a break now. Don't go anywhere. The station with the best, me, best, me, best, me, best, me, best music. Best music. I love the music. Best music. Best music. This one is explosive. You're listening. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Brandlife.co.za is Thought Leadership Radio. It's a new way to communicate your brand, your value, and what we think about your industry. Be a leader, be a voice, and we will help you shape your industry. Our radio platform is for thought leaders who want to share insights, businesses who want to create value for their databases, organizations who want to control their message, and those that drive change. Make your brand come alive on brandlife.co.za. Harnessing the power of talk radio. Brandlive.co.za
we've discussed the gap. Welcome back firstly, sorry, I'm plunging right in because I am so into the show. Craig, we're back again. Craig, is it true, uh, we've already discussed the fact that gangs control the prisons. They do, we all know this and you are just confirming it. Do the guards get paid off by these gangs? And who actually gives the guards the money? All the money is given to the guards outside. Out of by the people? So would it be that the gangs ha the in the prisons are also controlled by people outside of the prisons? I, I think what we need to understand is that, that the gangs are, are not only in the prisons. The gangs is a way of life. So the gangs, the 26s, 27s, the, the big five, the 28s, the various gangs are living in the communities and not only in, in, in the townships but also within the most affluent of our, our suburbs. So you are telling me the 26ers gang members live in suburbs they live and 28s all, all over? They live all over South Africa um, and they, they op operate um, on a daily basis. Okay. So the of the guards are paid from the outside to do what's necessary um, to bring things in to the inside. We had an instance where um, six um, Durkin bags of Dacha were found in, uh, in the scuff behind our, our cell, um, an area where only water ran and no one had access to that. Okay, so nobody knew where they come from. So tell me, these gangs, on the inside, it would be mainly black people, obviously because, uh, because our population is mainly indigenous people. But on the outside, is that race group mixed? Very much so. So you would have white kingpins probably. Yes. Indian people being involved. Yes. Coloreds acting all badass and gangster. The fact remains is whoever is able to get the drugs. Okay, so it is drug dominated. These gangs are dominated by drugs and that's how they well make their what money. What whatever the commodity or, or the need is. So it could be cell phones, drugs. It, it can Obviously be not condoms. <laughs> it can be electronics, motor vehicles. Okay. Uh, motor, uh, motor vehicles um, don't always end up in chop shops. Some of them pass over the, the border at, at, a, at, a, at an alarming rate. And yes. you know, so these people, like uh, a person in the prison that I got to know, Shelby, um, he worked in, in, in a, uh, a panel mechanic, shop. Mechanic, yes, as a mechanic. Um, in the Rivoli area and a solid solid um, salt of the earth man so. who really wanted to um, live his life straight and then what he had seen in the lolly lounges was not what he wanted for How his family. How old was he? Let's talk about the lolly lounges briefly. The lolly lounges, what those prisoners obviously are very exposed to lolly lounges. At what age are they exposed to this this vile way of life? From, from the time they can crawl. So they know this is what they're going to become actually. Well it's spoken over them. No, you're going to be just yes. like your father. You're going to be just like your mother. And then the young lads see their fathers beating up the mother. and th That's th what they, they learn. Th okay. And they, s they see that as being the, the norm. Okay. For Shelby, it wasn't the norm that he wanted. Right. So I know. Let's talk about Shelby, but very briefly, because I know we're running out of time, as I always do on my show. Just for our listeners, I read up on your case, obviously, and I know about Shelby. Shelby was a gentleman who was a mechanic, as you said. He, there was stolen cars found on those premises. It was a number of people working in that mechanic shop, one would say. Chop shop, one would call it. There was a night shift and a day shift. Shelby worked day shift, am I correct? That, that is correct, okay. yes. And then it was obviously more the night shift people who were involved. The judge only found Shelby guilty. And I believe that maybe Shelby was not guilty. He was not involved. Maybe he only had knowledge. He was incarcerated. His appeal... Did never happen. He was taken out of prison to go to court for the appeal. Every single time there was an excuse. In your time, how many appeals did Shelby try to get? Well, he went to um, court with me on five occasions. And the appeal never happened and because the documents were not up to date, because the criminal justice system let him down. Well, once again, if, if you can pay someone to remove docket then <laughs> that, that will happen. Do you feel that that happened in Shelby's case, that dockets were removed? And you may say it, we're not mentioning names. I, I do believe th that that happened. He also was let down by the system because he was given a court-appointed um, attorney or lawyer, okay. 
Right. So I want to just tell our listeners, because we have run out of time, Craig. Shelby committed suicide in the most horrific way, and would you mind if I tell the, the viewers how he did it? He sharpened a broom, he put that broom into his mouth, and he ran down a passage and slammed himself into a wall that that broomstick came out the back of his head. The criminal justice system in South Africa murdered Shelby. And this show right now is dedicated to Shelby, who killed himself when he had no reason to, because if his appeal was heard, I believe he would have come out of prison. So Shelby, may you rest in peace, truly, and I'm so sorry that your appeals were not heard, that you were let down once again by an inept government who cannot get their story straight, no matter what we do. President after president, farm attacks, and now I hear this about the criminal justice system, and I know that Shelby is only one of many. I know this. And I don't want to smudge my makeup, Shelby, even for your sake. Okay, this brings us to the end of our show. Craig, it has been amazing to have you here. Please pray see for me what has happened in your life since you were incarcerated incorrectly, and I'm saying you were incarcerated incorrectly because I know that you were. I work in this field, and I know who's innocent, and I know who's guilty. You have a criminal record at the moment. That's correct. Yes, we have not mentioned your case for a certain, for a reason, so we're not going to mention it. But tell me what's happened in your life. Well, I, I personally, I don't trust people. I, um, I have agoraphobia. I'm scared to go places. Um, I have panic attacks, which I never, ever had before. Um, I can't find work. Because of your criminal record? Because of the record, uh, or as soon as they see what has, has been put on, on, on paper. social media, yes, um, people will judge on that. Yes. And fake news, they will judge on that rather than asking for the truth of, uh, of the matter. Yes. My wife lost her job as well because we worked at the same place. So by association. By association, she lost her job. And so the both of us who have a, have a wealth of, of knowledge and... and um, just a heart to see people grow. They both um, had that ripped away from us. Because I can see that you have a lot to offer this world. I, I hope to, <laughs> please. I, I hope that I, I, I do. You know. You I, do, Craig, because I read your stuff. I read up on your case, as mm -hmm. you well know. You know, for, for me, I, I do see myself as a human capital prospector. I, I look at people, and I, I love watching Gold Rush um, um, when we did that DSTV, and I just. I was amazed by the amount of, of rubble that is removed, trees and grounds and rocks. And, and then when that small <coughs> piece of gold is found, how they, they embrace it, they celebrate yes. that. And it activates them to go out and do more. And for me, you know, being in prison, I saw so many people that had such a, a large amount of hidden gold. As I said to you earlier, I found very few people that were uneducatable. Right. Were, they, the people that I saw were highly, uh, the people I saw and interacted with were highly intelligent men. Okay. Craig, that brings us to the end of our show. I definitely have to get you here for a second session. I have to, because I see before me somebody who was, who slipped through the cracks unfairly. Thank you so much for being on our show. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time. Harnessing the power of talk radio. <laughs> brandlive.co.za